Welcome to another episode of 9 to 5 Mac Weekly, where my Mac Mini just sold yesterday, and uh, I'm going to miss it. I'm your host, Miles Somerville, and let's dive into the news. But before we get into the news, I kind of want to talk about how we're reformatting this show a little bit um, to kind of keep things fresh and interesting for me. And the first major change is going to be the fact that we're kind of only going to focus on one central topic uh, for each week's episode. And then we're going to go down the line of what's new in Mac, what's new in iPhone, iPad, what's new in watchOS, that sort of stuff. If there is significant news for that week. And we're also going to be doing a lot of reactions uh, to comments that you guys have on the videos that we post here on YouTube. So if you like commenting stuff and you want your comment to be seen on the channel, you might want to engage a bit more. So the big hubbub this week has been the big Apple versus Epic Games battle. Uh, Epic Games, as we all know, is the developer behind the popular game Fortnite. And so with Fortnite being on the Play Store and App Store, both Apple and Google get a revenue cut of any uh, in-game purchases made within Fortnite. Fortnite is a free game to download, uh, but the company makes all of their profits from the in-game purchases. So um, these have been long-standing guidelines, but I suppose uh, Epic Games kind of got tired of Apple's 30% revenue cut uh, of the in-game purchases. So they recently updated the app on the App Store and the Play Store, which allowed users to directly purchase content from Epic Games at a discounted price. Uh, doing this is a violation of both Google and Apple's guidelines. So both Apple and Google remove Fortnite from their respective platforms. So Fortnite immediately clapped back with a lawsuit against Apple, uh, in addition to a parody of their famous 1984 commercial. So obviously this was planned. Epic Games has been scheming. I gotta say, when looking at it at face value, this just looks like two big companies, two huge companies arguing over extra dollars. So nothing really new here with this story. The lawsuit is specifically uh, for claiming that Apple has violated antitrust regulations. Um, so we'll see if this holds up in court or not. Apple, I'm sure, has a very, very strong team of lawyers. Um, so if they don't back down, they're probably gonna fight this all the way to the end. And I gotta say, I can see where Epic Games is coming from with the ad and all. I understand that they feel like Apple can be very monopolistic and controlling at times. and. To an extent, I agree. Apple is kind of like that with pretty much every aspect of their product line, but that's kind of what also plays into the things that we love about Apple products so much. So regardless, while I'm not sure Epic Games is gonna win this lawsuit against Apple, I do think this is gonna spark a huge change uh, within Apple and within the developer community as a whole. I think Apple is gonna make some change as a result uh, of this lawsuit. But let's see what you guys have to say about it. I definitely wanted to get a developer's opinion on this, so I'm glad I found this comment first. David J says, I'm a developer who has owned an app company for about 10 years. It's very easy to slip time bombs in like this to skirt the app review and show up later. And Epic totally did it to throw in Apple's face. In my opinion, they are trying to take advantage of the fact that Congress is looking into anti-competitive behavior. They knew they would be rejected if they simply updated the app to include it, so they enforced Apple's hand and made them remove it from sale completely so they could throw up this ad campaign and try to make more money. It's dirty pool, and I hope Epic pays for it. Um, that's an interesting perspective, and like I said, there's almost multiple ways to look at it, but uh, the biggest two ways are uh, Epic Games is just being greedy and looking for extra profit uh, from Apple and Google, or maybe Google's policies and guidelines have been too extreme this whole time, and now Epic Games is coming in to take them down, so to speak. I mean, I'm not a developer, so I mean, my opinion on Apple's guidelines specifically as far as, you know, the revenue cuts and all that, 30%, I mean, at face value, that seems fair when you think about how many devices Apple is giving you access to, uh, the huge network they're giving you access to. But like I said, I'm not a developer, so who am I? Matthew Robb says, everyone knows they did it on purpose. They've been doing the same thing to Steam. They're trying to disrupt de facto monopolies in the industry. In this case, to sue Apple and Google, they had to establish themselves as a victim so they'd have grounds. Otherwise, the suit would just be thrown out. Yeah, I think uh, the theatrics of this whole thing definitely make me question Epic's motives as far as um, whether they're just, like I said, being greedy, trying to go after extra profits and playing the victim card, or if they're genuinely trying to just straight up go after monopolies in general and take down uh, all these other companies who have so much control 
over these industries. Mad Max says, to me this just smells like Epic knows Fortnite has peaked and they must not be acquiring new customers and the only way to keep profits up is to fight for the 30% that Apple takes or since their last round of funding, the VC now want a larger return on their investment in Epic. Yeah, I feel like Fortnite probably has peaked at this point and they're probably looking for a way to get some extra dollars in. I mean, they could raise the prices on their content, which people could be upset about, but this is probably a much more, like at least seemingly noble approach, uh, at least in the viewpoint of their fan base, you know, going after the greedy company that's preventing you from having cheaper V-Bucks and stuff like that. But I think until the next up and coming generation of kids learns how to use a controller, Fortnite has probably peaked for the most part, so it makes sense that they might be looking for another revenue stream. But let us know your thoughts on the whole situation down in the comment section below. Who's in the wrong, who's in the right, are both companies in the wrong? Let us know your thoughts. This past week, we published a bunch of iMac related content, including a review of the $1,800 base model. Uh, and I think it's safe to say you're gonna be seeing iMacs behind us in our videos to come, at least for a little while. I'm still using the base model here, and I gotta say performance has been very, very solid. I've made zero upgrades so far, and I've been very pleased with the performance. Uh, now, with that being said, are you guys interested in still seeing the 10 core model, a review, or a hands-on or performance test of that? Because I've still got it on order. Uh, but as a matter of fact, let's see what you guys have to say about the new IMAX. David says, yes, do a review on the i9 10th generation. I'm debating if I should go for the Gusto and get the 10th gen. I'm not really sure what you mean by Gusto, um, but 10th gen CPUs are looking to offer a significant increase in performance over 8th gen specifically uh, and 9th gen as well. So yeah, we should have a i9 iMac review on the way sometime soon. Leon Madera says, in quotes, they didn't even bother to change the design of the box. Are you buying the box? Does the shape of the design of the box affect the performance of the computer? That is just being extra petty. That's not really being extra petty or petty at all. That's just Jeff making an observation, pointing out a detail. That's what he does in his reviews. He points out details. For certain people, details matter. Now that is not a very important detail, but nonetheless, it's a detail that he decided to point out. Um, he was just emphasizing the fact that in addition to the fact that there's zero changes with the design, um, they also didn't even change the design of the box, which is something they typically do for model year updates, which is, you know, it's notable. Bora Sumer says, those bezels, come on, like, please. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it is what it is, but honestly, the display is so good. It just, it just makes up for it. Um, we'll have a new iMac next year. It's all good. Laurent Day Backer says, love your videos, man. Thank you. But I don't agree on a couple of things. First off, in quote, the iMac isn't that popular as other Mac desktops. Believe me, it is. Second, the 1080p camera won't make much of a difference. I don't think I will see the difference. Yes, you absolutely will. Maybe not in comparison to your dedicated webcam, but to the previous 720p cameras from the iMacs, you will. I've already seen some clips on YouTube and even from there, I can tell the blah, blah, blah. So, um, Firstly, if you're gonna quote me, you usually wanna say exactly what I said. I didn't exactly say desktops, I just said other Macs. I just said the iMac isn't as popular as other Macs, specifically the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air. They sell more of those than they do iMacs, I'm pretty sure. And secondly, yes, I was wrong. I had yet to see what the 1080p webcam in the iMac was gonna look like. I didn't think it was gonna be that big of a deal, but after reviewing it and using it and testing it, uh, I said in my video that yes, it does make a huge difference and it's better than my $200 dedicated webcam uh, with a higher resolution. Didn't do nothing says, for all my broke boys, if you are looking to save, I recommend just getting yourself the 2017 iMac base model. Hmm. Unless you are working on some seriously big products, you don't need anything else and some simple hacks to upgrade for cheap. Buy and install your own RAM and an external SSD, specifically an SSD with a USB-C connector for faster read and write as it comes with a 1T HDD <laughs> fusion drive. Here are some examples of my typical daily use. ZBrush highly poly sculpting, never crash, ever medium lag depending on how much I push it. Video editing in 4K Premiere Pro, typically no lag. Adobe Suite products, typically never lags. Gaming, well, it's a Mac. Don't do much of it. Can confirm games like WoW or RunScape will run without lag on Mac settings. Hope this helps. Um, it's funny because just a few months ago, I was thinking about doing like a buy an old iMac and kind of throw in new parts, see how well it performs against a newer Mac, that kind of video. I was thinking about doing something like that, but it sounds like you've, you've got it all figured out. This is clearly a very, 
very thorough uh, performance test. Everything's spelled out correctly here. Um, thank you. Albert Zappa says, I am 75 and I have a 2011 iMac and I wanted to get the new design, but couldn't wait. I got mine on the way in three days, but I got the eight core. Nice, nice. I just hope it'll last as long as my 2011. If it does, then it might outlast me. Well, I mean, I, I hope not. I, I don't, I don't wish that your Mac outlives you, but, um, if it does, I guess that just means Apple computers, you know, they're, they're good, but that's going to be about it for this video. Thank you all for watching and thank you for the engagement as usual in our videos. If you want to have your Mac setup featured in a video on the channel, uh, check the description below to figure out how to do that. But other than that, make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed, subscribe for future content like this, and I'll talk to you guys next week.